Shabbat Shalom, family of Messiah Yeshua. Shabbat Shalom to the worldwide YouTube and social media community. This is your beloved brother Shaul Israel coming back again with another Yahweh inspired message. I'll be reading from the book of John, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. John 1 and verse 1. John 1 and verse 1, and I read In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. The word refers exclusively to Yahweh. The word refers exclusively to Yahweh. Because Yahweh is the only one who existed before all things. No man existed before all things. No man exists for all things. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim, the word was Elohim. Those that use this verse to teach that a man not only existed before creation, but is the creator of all things, they misuse, misapply the scripture because they misunderstand and they do not properly interpret the scripture. In the beginning was the word and the word was with Elohim and the word was Elohim refers to Yahweh because Yahweh is the only one who is never ending with no beginning and no ending. He's the only one that exists before all things. Go to Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the Shamaim and the earth. Or in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved from the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. Yahweh spoke, let there be light, and light came to existence. So we mean for the word to be with Yahweh. The word which proceeds from Yahweh, which is Yahweh, Simply means that whatsoever Yahweh says comes into existence. Because the word is Yahweh. Read again. And Elohim said, let there be light in their light. Go to verse 6. And Elohim said, let there be a ferment in the midst of the water and let divide the water from the water. Verse 9, and Elohim said, let the water under the heaven be gathered together under one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Verse 11, and Elohim said, let the earth bring forth grass, the earth yield seed, and the fruit tree yield fruit of the sky, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 14, and Elohim said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the light, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for a sign of a season and for days and years and so on and so forth when the scripture says the word was with Yahweh simply means that whatsoever Yahweh says comes into existence comes into being the word is not distinct from Yahweh the word is not flesh and blood the word is not man, not human. The word is Yahweh. So those who interpret the word to mean that Yahweh is either a man or Yahweh created a man who would have the title word, do you misunderstand the scripture? And if you misunderstand the scripture, then you misinterpret the scripture and you give a wrong application of scripture. 
Go back to John 1. John 1. And verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with Yahweh. And the Word was Yahweh. Yahweh is the only one who was in the beginning. Yahweh is the creator of all things. No one other than Yahweh is the creator of heaven and earth. And create all things by speaking it into existence. Word means speech. Word means language. Word proceed out the language proceed out of Yahweh. Word does not refer to flesh and blood. See, when a person reads John 1 14, and the word was made flesh and drew among us, and he beheld the glory, the glory as of the only God of the Bible full of favor and truth. The statement the word was made flesh does not mean that Yahweh became a man. It does not mean that. Those interpret that the word being made flesh means that Yahweh became a man, you misunderstand the scripture. Because according to Numbers 23, 19, it is written, Yahweh is not a man. They shall lie. Now the son of man, they shall repent. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Yahweh is not a man. They shall lie. Now the son of man, they should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoke, and shall he not make it good? So the statement, and the word was made flesh, does that mean that Yahweh became a man? Or that the word refers to a second divine being called the son. No. Why? Because Jesus the Messiah was created. The creation of Jesus the Messiah was not before all things, before heaven and earth. The creation of Jesus the Messiah was in the womb of Mary, as written in Matthew 1. Matthew 1 and verse 18. Now the birth of Yeshua HaMashiach was on this wise. When as mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. The Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a puppet and sample, but might to put away privately. But while he thought of these things, behold, the Malachi God appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of Daoid. Fear not to take on you, marry your wife. For that was conceived in her of the Holy Ghost, is of the Spirit of Yahweh. So, Yeshua of Nazareth beginning was in the womb of Mary. Yeshua of Nazareth had a beginning. So, being that Yeshua HaMashiach had a beginning, he was not and is not the Word. The Word is the exclusive title of one, and that's Yahweh. Only Yahweh can be called the Word. So if you're calling Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach the Word, then you sin. You're an error. And you have not an understanding and a proper discernment and the ability to apply the Scripture. The Word refers to Yahweh. So Yeshua of Nazareth beginning was in the womb of Mary, not before creation. Because those, those to, um, who twist the scripture in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. You do handle scripture wrongfully. To say that Yeshua of Nazareth is the word he's saying that he not only existed before his conception 
you said that he is divine. That he was alongside Yahweh before creation came to existence. When the statement is made and the word was made flesh, Yahweh created an image and likeness of himself as he did in the beginning. Genesis 1, verse 26. Genesis 1, 26. And, Yah, and Elohim said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image, and the image of him created he him. Man will be able to create he them. But Yahweh is a spirit. So Yahweh has neither form, shape, or fashion. So when the scripture said that Yahweh created man in his image and his likeness, simply means that he created man in the reflection of his character. Because Yahweh is formless. Without shape, without fashion, without figure. He's a disembodied being. So when Yahweh made man in his image and likeness, he made man in his reflection of his character. So it means for the word to be made flesh. When the Scripture says the word was made flesh. Yahweh created an image of himself. He created a man to express his character. But that was set apart without sin, without error. And just, uh, when the scripture says that, let us make man in our image after our likeness does not mean that Yahweh is speaking to another God or other gods. Mother, because the scripture says there's only one God. It is written in Isaiah Isaiah chapter 40 3 and verse 10. You are my witnesses, says Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no ill form, not shall they after me. I, even I, am Yahweh, there, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and I saved and I have shown when there was no strength Elohim among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says Yahweh, that I am El. I am El. So like I said, there, according to scripture, there's no mighty one with Yahweh nor beside Yahweh. Yahweh is the one and only mighty one of all things. So when the scripture says, let us make man in our image after our likeness, Yahweh simply is communicating or speaking with himself. The us and our in reference to Yahweh does not mean a plurality of individuals, a plurality of deity, a plurality of persons in Yahweh. For Yahweh is a solitary one deity. So if you teach that Yahweh coexists with two other divine beings, you mishandle the scripture. You give your own interpretation and thus you give your own application 
that calls you to violate commandments that says you shall have no other Elohim before y'all. So Genesis 1.26, the true understanding of Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our image after our likeness simply is that Yahweh was speaking with himself all by himself. Yahweh was not talking to an eternal son. Yahweh was not talking with an a, 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 a entity, a distinct or separate entity called the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit is Yahweh. If you're teaching that the Holy Spirit is a distinct being apart from Yahweh, you have not an understanding of Scripture. If you don't have an understanding of Scripture, then you give your own interpretation of Scripture. That leads to your own application, which is a wrong application. Yahweh is one. And it's written again, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our El is one Yahweh. The name Yahweh is the name, is the identity of Yah, identity of the Most High. Yahweh did not refer to his nature alone, but Yahweh, the name, referred to both the nature and the identity of the Most High. When Yahweh said, let us make man and our image after our life, he was speaking with himself alone. He was working all things after the counsel of his own will, as written in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things at the counsel of his own will. So when Yahweh said, let us make man in our image, at our likeness, Yahweh was counting with his own will. And the will of Yahweh is not separate from Yahweh. Yahweh is one. He's a solitary and individual deity. The scripture says, and the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh simply means that Yahweh created an image and likeness of himself. Why? Because Yahweh is not a man. Now the son of man, they should repent. Yahweh is a spirit. Yahweh cannot die. Yahweh is all knowing and all powerful and ever present. So when the scripture says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, Yahweh did not become a man. He cannot become a man. Because he cannot cease to be who he is. And that is the most high, almighty. So when the scripture says, And the world was made flesh and dwelt among us, Yahweh created an image and likeness of himself. Rather, you create a restored image and likeness of himself. Why? Because Adam, who was the first image and likeness of Yahweh, and image and likeness of mean Yahweh created man in his reflection of his character. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and he beheld his glory. <coughs> As of the only begotten of the Abba, full of favor and truth. So, Jesus of Nazareth, 
Jesus Christ is not the word. Let me say it again. Jesus Christ is not the word. Because Jesus Christ was not and is not eternal. Jesus Christ did not exist before creation. Jesus Christ did not exist in the days of the prophets. But Jesus Christ came into existence when Yahweh caused him to be conceived in the womb of Mary. This is the teaching of scripture. In order for your belief in Messiah Yeshua, that you may reconcile to Yahweh to be legitimate and sound, you must believe on Yeshua of Nazareth as it is written in the scripture. Yahweh is not a man. Yahweh did not become a man. Yahweh cannot die. But if you teach him that Yahweh became a man or that Yahweh is a man, you teach a lie. So, your belief must be according to what's written in the scripture. You must have understanding of the context of scripture. When your understanding is proper, then you're able to properly interpret the scripture. They may apply it. So the application of scripture is wisdom. In the beginning was the word, the word was with Yahweh, the word was Yahweh. Simply means that Yahweh is the creator of heaven and earth. And how did he create heaven and earth? By speaking it into existence. Though it means for the word to be with Yahweh. When the word says the word was with Yahweh, simply that means that what Yahweh says it comes into existence. The word being with Yahweh does not refer to a secondary individual or deity that was alongside Yahweh. But word being with Yahweh says meaning that what Surah Yahweh says it comes to pass. It comes into existence. If you're teaching that Jesus Christ is God, you teach a lie. If you're teaching that Jesus Christ existed before creation and exists in the day of the prophet, that's a lie. If you're teaching that Jesus Christ created all things, you teach another damn lie. And it's written in the scriptures that all liars should have the part in the lake with burning fine brimstone. And it's written again in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 15. For without the kingdom of Yahweh is dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves and makes a lie. Jesus Christ is not God Almighty. Jesus, Jesus Christ did not exist prior to his conception. Jesus Christ was a man only. He only had a singular nature. Jesus Christ didn't have dual nature. He had a singular nature. And that was human. After his death, when Yahweh raised him from the dead the third day, Yahweh glorified him, gave him a uh, spiritual nature. But even with that spiritual nature, Jesus Christ is not dead. He's not a secondary God with Yahweh. Because there's only one God. And Yahweh is He. Yahweh is that one and only God. So, 
in order to understand the scripture, you must receive revelation from Yahweh. That you may not only understand, but you may properly interpret, and they may apply the scripture. So you hold fast to the scriptures. Forsake the tradition of man that caused one to reject the righteousness of Yahweh. You hold fast to Yahweh's Sephardic tradition as written in the Sephardic scriptures. Yahweh's one. Y'all was not two. Y'all was not three. Y'all was one. And the use of one in reference to y'all does not mean a unity of person in y'all. But one in regards to Yahweh means a solitary, singular being. In reference to Yahweh, Yahweh is singular, not multiple. Now that track down the ones of Yahweh. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there's no Elohim with me. That's plain. Yahweh is the one and only God. There's no other God with him, no beside him. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Now that there are any that can deliver out of my hand. Turn to Ecclesiastes 18. And verse 1. He that lives forever create all things in general. Now only is right there's none other but he. Turn to Isaiah. Isaiah 45 and verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have surnamed you, though you have not known me. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. I am Yahweh, there is none else. And there is no hell beside me. I gird you, though you are not known me. That they may know from the rising of the sun, and from the west, that there's none beside me. I am Yahweh, and there's none else. So, according to Scripture, Yahweh is the one and only God. And there's no other God with him. To say that Jesus Christ is God, you have called Scripture to be broken. Or rather, you seek to intend to break, to break the Scripture. For well, the scripture cannot be broken. Therefore, Jesus Christ is not God. Jesus was a man used of God Almighty. Jesus Christ was a man used of Yahweh to purchase redemption and reconciliation with Yahweh. Because Yahweh can't die, Yahweh cannot shed blood. So, Yahweh created a man. Created an, an, another image and life of himself that would be able to suffer and die and purchase redemption and reconciliation for the sins of the world. So, the scripture teaches the absolute strict monotheism. It teaches absolute strict monotheism. It don't teach multiple gods, multiple deities. So, yeah, believing in Trinity, you must repent of that foolishness. For Trinity is false doctrine, you must repent of it. You must acknowledge that Trinity 
is false. That is not from nor inspired of God. And you must submit yourself unto one God. One supreme mighty one. And that is Yahweh. And you must go down and walk in the name of Yahweh's Son. That is Jesus Christ. That you may receive the pardon of your sin and the quickening of your soul. And you must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as initially evident by speaking our tongue and Yahweh permits one speak. This is what you must do. You must repent of sin. Which is, which is transgression against Yahweh's law. For sin will cause you to be lost and to not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Galatians chapter 5, starting verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest with are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy. Image, murder, drunkenness, and revelation, and such like of which I tell you before, as I, told, as, as, as I have also told in time past, that, with, that they will do so, they should not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. So you must repent of sin, repent of your transgression, such transgression as adultery, and fornication, and uncleanness. And idolatry and heresy. You must repent of that false teaching. And if you repent of false teaching, then you submit yourself unto the truth of Yahweh, unto this message. That you may not receive of the plague that will be put forth upon those who walk in darkness, walk contrary to the word of Yahweh. So believe what's written in the scripture. Forsake the tradition of man. And hold fast to the word of God. You want salvation, you must obey every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Oh Yahweh, in the name of your brother son, Yeshua Hamashiach, I thank you for another opportunity to speak your word of truth. I beseech you, Yahweh, may continue to draw your children to both hear and receive your word. That you grant your elect ones an understanding, discernment, and wisdom of who you are and the patience to bear witness of your solitary and singular nature and identity. Guard and preserve and sustain us in our wisdom, patience, and shalom. Continue to raise up unto your servant faithful support and relief toward the servant. Continue to purify our hearts that sin find no root within our hearts. But stab your word within us. I thank you, O Yahweh, for another Shabbat. I give your name, honor, glory, and praise. So be it, so be it. Remember, family, as you're able, please send a donation of any amount to Support and provide relief for your beloved brother and faithful medicine, Messiah Yeshua. Please send a donation either to my cash app, PayPal, Venmo, MoneyGram, or Western Union. Need your help, man. Love you all. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>